But the stories they've chosen are so fucking bizarre and banal and insane. They have to be real. The only possible way that this exists is that these old guys were like, well, I've actually got a great and very, very funny story. <laughs> and the fucking <laughs> husk of a human who wrote this was like, tell me about the time you and your friends went roller skating and then didn't for 12 <laughs> minutes. Please. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or Zarga Thrax will be released from his prison of frost. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Well, I'll tell you, Noah. <laughs> Mouth noises. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about your goiter or something. Yeah. <laughs> what goiter? That? Oh, that right there? That on, the, the big thing on your face? I didn't even tell me about it, though. <laughs> so tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Wednesday Morning Breakfast Club. It's the story of. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the story of anything. It is not. It's not. I can't do my bit Reject about it. it's the story premise. of it's nothing. <laughs> nothing happens in the movie. No. Uh, strong, strong opposition. All right. So, Eli, tell us in opposition, how bad was this movie? Well, if you wish those kids would get off your lawn and write a screenplay about how valuable and interesting you are <laughs> you will love this movie it's a last minute what i did last summer essay the movie yes <laughs> yes oh my god that's perfect all right so I, I have a weird reference that kept occurring to me during this movie it, bear with me here in the classic 80s sitcom Cheers, Sam Malone, played by Ted Danson, once got a job as a sportscaster, but he wasn't very good at it. That was the whole plot of the episode. But all his friends, we would ask how he did, and they would be like, oh, it was it was great, man. So he turns to cynical waitress Carla, played by Rhea Perlman, and he asks how he really did. And she answers, and I quote, it was like watching old people eat. <laughs> Carla's the fucking best. Right. The, the comedy writers in 1980, whenever, plucked that out as an absolute comic exemplar of the most unpleasant of things to watch. And these fucking idiots made it into a movie. Yep. And OK, but they made it slower. So like watching old people eat. Yeah, that sucks. But like they did it in slow. Everything happened in slow motion. It was worse than that somehow. Right. It's so bad. Well, we and we want us to meet over and over again. And yeah. Through the eyes of an idiot, through the eyes of someone you unmatch with on Tinder and consider deleting the app. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst prayer getting answered so it's technically a christian movie there's some christian mm -hmm. bullshit in there yeah. for a couple moments one of those moments somebody's doing a little bit of christian apologetics the context is the holocaust to be clear <laughs> we'll get there mm -hmm. and yeah, so already you're doing apologetics for the god of the universe and the context is the holocaust this is you're not you're not going to win this one problematic and yep but the prayer that gets answered is like the holocaust is happening is really bad and my mom she prayed to Jesus Christ and the, the miracle that happened was like not the Holocaust stopping. No, nope. it was like some little low level thing within it that like one person, some specific kind of bad thing didn't happen. But everybody, the Holocaust was still happening. Yeah. To be clear, and we'll talk about this in a second. What mom prayed for was for her child not to be drafted into the bad guy's side of the Holocaust. Yep. Not to not get Holocausted, but not to have to Holocaust. <laughs> so Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst compliment. All right, so this whole movie, there's this, these old guys in there, and, and, and as seen through the eyes of their waitress, and one of the guys keeps offering up these goddamn, you know, big bad Wolfian compliments to her the whole time. You know, yep. Every time he opens his mouth, it's to say it's to compliment some ever creepier aspect of this poor girl. 
Mm -hmm. And that is all that character will do until he literally dies. (laughs) You're right. I thought he was nice. I thought he was being nice. They could have laid a tasteless blowjob themed t-shirt on that chair and then swept it away in between scenes and it would have done the exact same thing as that guy did in this movie. And I, of course, am going to go with best worst hard right turn because I, I was watching this movie and I watched it before Noah and Heath and I was like, ah, you know, nothing's happening in this movie. Is it really worth doing? Because it's just sort of like a boinka boinka bassoon comedy mm-hmm. about how old people are exist. Really quick, I'll answer for you. No, it's not. No, it good. was. Yeah. But then, <laughs> but then, 30 minutes in, someone goes into a fucking fugue state for 11 <laughs> straight minutes like the fucking cupcake dog meme. And I knew this needed to be on our podcast. <laughs> Okay, the the old guy in the fugue state for a second, I actually laughed for a while because I was like, this is funny if he keeps going and he kept, it's the best. And he just kept going. Yeah. Oh, the editorial at the end was like, it started off with misdirected holocaust prayers, but then when he gets to the editorial section, it's even worse. And then, and then, again, we'll discuss it, the movie just goes right back to bassoon comedy. Yes, right. The movie is never like, hey man, what the fuck was that? <laughs> You can't say Holocaust and then have a bassoon anytime nope. near. You have to space <laughs> nope. that out just you know, soundtrack wise. <laughs> right. Everybody knows that. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a 48 minute movie where nothing ever happens. So we're going to pad the runtime with a skit here, but we'll shuffle our way back soon with all the elderlying that is the Wednesday morning breakfast club. I don't feel anything. Reach deeper. I'm trying. My arm hurts. Hey, guys. Hey, what are you doing with the couch? If you. If you guys are doing that thing again, Lucinda's going to kill you. No, 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 no. We're, we're trying to save some money. And, you know, what better way to scrape up some extra cash than the couch cushions? Yeah, but my arm is getting tired. Guys, if you want to save some money, why not switch to Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Uh, come on, Noah. What's the catch? No catch. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can keep the same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get your plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. <laughs> Guess we actually won't be needing this then. I, I'm sorry. Is that a de- is that a gold bar? Yeah, you know, just just in case. Just in case, exactly. How many of those do you have? I, I mean, not, not a lot. No, nah, not in bar form, at least. Right. I feel like... Yeah, but you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind, exactly. Did you try baking soda and vinegar? No, does does that work on red wine? No. I think so. Maybe it's the salt. You can do a salt <gasps> thing. Hey, guys. Hey, well, Steve, man, what's, what's the matter? Um... You guys are going to want to sit down. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but my my grandpa died. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, me too. Condolences. Yeah, you guys remember him, right? I, I think so. Uh, he was like watching TV once when we came to pick you up, right? He was just kind of sitting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, classic Gramps. He was just so quirky. Quirky because quirky he... Because he liked TV. Dude. The quirk. Dude. So, yeah. No. Sorry. Yeah. No. Quirky, obviously. Yes. I, uh, yeah. Oh, and guys, he told the best stories. Like, like, did you guys know that when he was a kid, there was World War II? Well, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they would have to be based on his age. That, that was when that happened. Yeah. So, I, yeah. So, did he have stories from the war? Or? No. No. Just that, like, it happened. Mm. Anyways, I was thinking, I know we're planning on making this movie about Dave's trip to Europe and his relationship with his dad, Mm -hmm. but what if we made it about, like, old people and how little we appreciate them Uh, while they're here? uh, Uh, Well, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. don't you guys think that's, like, a super important message? Uh, So, okay, so don't take this the wrong way, but um, old people suck. Suck. Yes. What? No, they don't. Uh, I mean, statistically, yeah, they do. Some don't, but a lot do. Like, they're more conservative on average, more racist, 
They're worse parents. They're less educated. They're less kind to other people. Worse partners. Yeah. So the list really goes on. It's a lot. Point is, I know you miss your grandpa, obviously, but I'm worried that a movie about how great old people are, it's going to be wildly dishonest at worst and boring blindness at best. What if I buy the beer? Well, I mean, we got to pay tribute to such a great totally. band. Right. I mean, this is important. Important. Greatest generation. So what TV did he like? He mostly just stared at it in a fugue state. God. Yikes. Okay. Dude. dude. I mean, yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Story of him. Yikes. That story is so good. We'll tell it. Yep. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up by watching a trio of old men shuffle their way downtown. Yep. <sighs> it's so slow. Everything that happens. They have old guy walking, mm -hmm. old guy look at newspaper, and apparently that was all the old guy space work they could think of because third old guy is just walking slow-ish yep. and trying his absolute hardest not to look directly into the camera. <laughs> That'll be something of a running theme here. Yeah, it says a lot about this movie. Like, it's 48 minutes long, and the first three minutes of it are literally just these old men all working their way towards these benches. <laughs> yep. It's so slow. Like, no exaggeration. It's three minutes of this. My notes are old guy walking and then i wrote judgy because i think i felt i was mad that like i'll, I'll probably walk like that like yeah soon. No, I feel like true. this movie's being judgy but old guy walking old guy sitting old guy walking other old guy walking yep old guys wave to each other from far away we watch them walk to each other they shake hands and then the two of them walk together for even yes. longer I was like, all right, this is this a prank that like did Eli make this movie somehow? <laughs> this is a, like this and is add a it to the schedule joke that like somebody played on Peter Jackson or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Peter Jackson, the music cue here is mm -hmm. Sam carries Frodo those last few steps. <laughs> it really which is. Which is a, yes. a weird contrast to old guys just walking around. Also, I can't help but feel like the Chamber of Commerce gave him a few bucks towards the making of this movie, provided that they put in a long shot of the fountain and all the lovely benches that they put in last year. Got a chocolate cafe now. <laughs> Make sure you get in the chocolate cafe for at least a sizable percentage of your movie. <laughs> Just old guys start pushing boulders up hills and then roll it back down. <laughs> it, like it, again, there's so many things... We're like, if they had just kept doing what they were doing for, you know, a bit longer, it became super funny. But they didn't. No, nope. they, they, yeah. they never became they do what they think is a movie. But again, to be super clear, six percent of this movie is these old guys walking at the beginning. Yep. <laughs> and that's I, I, I'm not even subtracting out credits when I do that. Matt. No, that's like, yeah, good the amount of Americans that voted for D's nuts in 2016 and the percentage of this movie that is old man walking <laughs> are equivalent. Yeah. You know, you know who you voted for is Amy Coney Barrett when you yeah. voted for these nuts. Good job. Great job with that. Congrats. So at length, we're going to meet our narrator, Megan. Right. So Megan is a 19 year old girl who's on her way to a job interview when we first see her. OK, look, I'm not worried that my sister will ever listen to this podcast because she doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> but this this <laughs> narrator writes and sounds exactly like my sister writing. Interesting. Like it is terrifyingly similar in that no two sentences are connected and every turn of phrase is used incorrectly so that it feels like aliens are imitating someone through a robot. Yeah, look at one of her first lines is I had a job interview and it couldn't have come sooner. Right? Like she meant soon enough, right? But I mean, also it could have. I mean, you could have had it yesterday. It would have been yeah. way better, in fact, that it comes sooner. Well, I don't know. She's, she says, I'm late. And I'm like, oh, that must be why it couldn't have come sooner. Yeah. <laughs> we also learned that she drives Heath's car here, which is very exciting. Yep. Okay. She okay. Drives. A lot of stuff about that. I wrote the word judgy in my notes a lot. <laughs> Fred Flintstone passes this lady on the right, flips her the bird. Yes. <laughs> I might as well pass her on the right. It's really bad. Yeah, it's right, really bad. Right. But we learned that she lost her last job. Uh, no fault of her own. Wasn't her fault. Stupid fucking manager mismanaged the fucking place and it went out of business. 
Literally, that sentence is more interesting than the rest of the entire movie. <laughs> right, because there's some mystery there, and yeah. But she lost her job. Now she needs another one because she's stuck eating crackers and jelly. I hope not together. Okay. Uh, again, judgy. No <laughs> and the movie. Don't clear. Who doesn't like crackers? It was crackers and uh, saltines. That's a delightful snack or meal or, <laughs> so, you know, all right, in sure. between those things, the food that you eat. And I have to point this out too, right? Because along the way, she's late and she gets stuck behind an old person, right? And the reason is because this movie's supposed to, like, she's supposed to have this, oh, old people are such an inconvenience attitude at the beginning, but they didn't really develop it. So it's just a very <laughs> long scene of her passing some old lady on a road. Right. We watched this judgy old lady get passed for quite a while here. <laughs> Well, what's very clear is they were like, hey, Margaret's mom, will you be the old lady? And she was like, sure. You won't be going fast in the cars, will you? <laughs> well, she, she's going to need to pass you. No, 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 no. <laughs> if we're going to do this so-called passing scene, we'll do it at eight miles an hour. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But are you going to speed up when she starts to actually pass yes. you? Like the asshole people who always do that and they were going super slow and then they try to speed up because they're mad that they were getting passed? Is that what's going to happen? I literally just drove away in my car while you were asking. Me <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also, so her car is supposed to like run out of gas at this point, but they're not going to actually run a car out of gas. So <laughs> they just have her come to a stop while they ADR in bad engine noises. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, or right, their buddy doing an impression of bad engine noises. Well, that's a video game. Okay, that's dying in a video game. No, it's like it lost a life. That's exactly the right thing. <laughs> this movie's pretty sure bassoon means comedy. Yep. But like, they don't nail bassoon comedy notes. They just like stole one from the high school. So whenever anything stops happening, it's like. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> if it can't be solved with a bassoon soundtrack, well, then damn it. They're going to have to break out the piccolo. Yeah, that is the <laughs> entire soundtrack of this. It was like the bassoon somehow had a question mark after a note. Yep. It was like. <laughs> what? Yeah, so she has to run the last few blocks to her interview to cartoon sound effects. And damn it, her cell phone also won't work, so she can't call. Yeah. Oh, and she's locked her keys in her car. Ugh, just keeps getting worse. And her dress gets caught in a lawnmower. Yeah. And gravity stops working. <laughs> also, <laughs> right. also, I have to point this out. As she's running to the restaurant, there's this moment where a car, like, almost hits her, right? And she has to, like, swerve around it. It's, like, pulling out or something as she runs by. I guarantee that that was not a planned event. No. Way too realistic looking. <laughs> Car got way too close. Because she's terrified. She, oh, yeah. She really, like, well, and when she dodges it, she then looks into the camera like, oh, are we cutting? No. Oh, All right. Okay, back yeah, into dude, the not camera. Show. I'm a professional. I said that out loud. <laughs> We're rolling. Tuck and roll. So, yeah, so she she hustles her way to the restaurant. And this is where we're going to meet Virgil, the, the restaurant's owner. He's going to interview her. OK, have you ever seen the Iceman documentaries where they <laughs> interview that famous hitman mm -hmm. who's obviously a psychopath and he just lazily explains cutting off people's head with a hacksaw? Oh, you mean Virgil, the restaurant owner? <laughs> yeah, that is Virgil, the restaurant owner. <laughs> If you told me this is what the Iceman did right before those interviews as like a wacky fun prank, I'd be like, OK, yeah, that makes sure. Sense. Sure. Any chance the Iceman was a very literal Nazi? Because I have a question about what happens next. In, oh, in the movie. why would you have that question, Heath? OK, so this man, Virgil, who may or may not be a Nazi hitman, he has on his restaurant wall something called Kathy's Clean Plate Club. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, you know, those wall restaurant things where it's like. Oh, you know, they ate the, like, 200-pound steak or whatever. <laughs> he has the Kathy's Clean Plate Club. Uh, it's spelled Kathy with a K. So, okay. Clean with a K. Uh-oh. Club with a K. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get, you get one K. You get yep. one. <laughs> Just to be safe, you don't do two even, and they've done yep. three. It's KKK. Mm -hmm. Also, and I know that the racism dog whistle is probably more important, but... Why put up a whole, like, these guys even managed to eat all of our crap pictures on your wall, right? Like, does it doesn't speak well of your food. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It also doesn't speak of a challenge. It speaks more of, like, 
bad attitudes towards eating for children. Yeah. Right? Because if it's like the burger monster, it's like, okay, I get it. America's broken and you're participating in it. (laughs) But the clean plate cup just seems like my grandmother giving me a low-key eating disorder at the age of nine. Just like, I ate all the food, so you love me now. (laughs) Are we saying that's bad? Like, how how did you earn love then if you were a kid? Yeah, right. Well, no, that is (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, I never associated food with positive emotions again. (laughs) You eat all the food and you you win a sport and then your parents love you. Uh, Occasionally. I'm confused, but it's very judgy. Everything that's happening so far, I don't understand my childhood. What? I also have to point out Virgil's interview here, right? So he's going to interview her. He's going to ask her three questions, or sorry, four questions, three of which will be clarifying things that she has written on her application. Yep. And then he's like, yeah, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> he conducts this interview as though there are two other gunmen getting into position for an assassination while they talk right and he's got to cue them to make sure that they know when the guy is on the street or something yeah right. sorry are you taking out an umbrella indoors <laughs> ah, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's, i just was checking the the the, the shaft on it, it works, for later works fine yeah so you were a waitress cool um did you do any weather <laughs> while you were there sorry did you say did i do any weather great you're hired yep. <laughs> great Thank you. Don't hang around the dumpster at night. Okay. I use it for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, because we need a comedy beat at the end, she goes to leave and she's like, oh, do you have a spare gallon of gas and a spare? This is it. I'm just writing down the words that she fucking said. Do you have a spare gallon of gas and a spare wire hanger to spare? Okay. Was there a sale on the word spare? <laughs> <laughs> If somebody asks that, just get, it's, it's bad. What's ha- Something's gone wrong. Something has gone wrong in your life if people are asking you that. Also, like, I, I get that they're going for comedy, but what? <laughs> I wanted him to be like, I actually do have a gallon of gas right here. You need to do a back alley abortion and then burn the evidence. I get it. <laughs> That's even cra- If he pulls out a gallon of gas and a wire hanger, like taped to the side of the gas can. It's like, oh. Like, oh, okay. I, I guess an abortion. Uh, is this an abortion? I thing? don't want it oh, now. Okay, you need an emergency mind. kit B is what you're saying. <laughs> what's what's A? <laughs> All right. So it's it's the next day and, and she's at work now. She's waitressing away at this diner. And the other waitress, this is Martha, her, her co-worker, is very upset because damn it, if those old fuckers that come in every Wednesday morning aren't back for their breakfast again. Yeah. She's like, oh, they're always complaining about everything. The food's too cold. They are in pain. You know, the usual. (laughs) Yeah, they're always complaining. She's like, oh, they don't like the food. She's like, oh, no, it's mostly about their arthritis and their knees and shit. (laughs) Of course, what she doesn't say is they don't tip for shit, which is what she should have warned them. But because she doesn't say that, Megan's like, oh, I'll I'll take the table of shitty old people. Mm -hmm. That's just a rookie mistake. We all know they were tipping fucking 10 cents. There's no you look just come on. Come on. So she walks over there to the table. She's mid good morning. And one of the guys is like, I need a cushion for my ass. Honestly, I would say this is a silly comedy beat, but I cannot tell you how many old people in my short, short, tragic time as a server asked me for a cushion for their chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and look, if you need a cushion for your ass, you, you have to carry one with you, right? I was once asked for armrests for a chair. I think about that three times a day. <laughs> you were, sorry. Yep. You were asked to install, yep. like do construction of yeah. armrests. And it wasn't. Here, here's the thing. I barely have any memories of my passed on father, but I remember this vividly because I think about it three times a day. He said, do you have any armrests for this chair? He didn't even say, mm-hmm. do you have a chair with armrests? He said, do you have any armrests for this chair? <laughs> As though I was going to reach uh. beso- behind me like fucking Daredevil and be like, oh, these? Click, clack. <laughs> I have ah, that's I have armrests for other chairs that don't. That's, you're going to have to put your arms somewhere. I don't know what to tell you. So, yeah, and of course, they're doing all the classic terrible. Th- well, actually, they're not right. The the writer's going for all the classic terrible customer things, but they, you can only think of one. Right. So they start ordering before she's even uh, there and, and stuff. And then. Oh, and of course, we have to get the 
this guy's old so he can't hear very well gag. Oh my God. 37 times. Genuinely, I made it through this movie going, the only reason to make it through this movie is that I know Heath is also about to watch this movie and has to watch <laughs> this gag happen over I was and over. Furious. <laughs> For most of this movie, furious. Uh, mm. ah, so many, right, so many days of my life being a bartender. Wait, it, it, you're the worst. Everybody who's not the best at restaurants should not go to restaurants. You're, you're the worst. You're, it's like you're, you're, you don't get along with dogs. It's worse than that. <laughs> not being cool at a restaurant. I hope you die. And also, like the writer isn't good enough to pull off this guy because as tired as it is, you can still get away with the old guy keeps mishearing what you're saying gag if you're clever enough to think of you know, reasonable and funny misunderstandings. But it's always A, something that sounds nothing like what she just said, and B, <laughs> something that would be batshit fucking crazy for him to think she just said. Yeah. They're writing both sides of the conversation. So you can, you can set him up. The thing that, you like, can. that rhymes, that works, because you got to write the beginning and the end of the thing. Yep. But they couldn't figure out how to make any of it line up. It's... It, it's 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 really sad. So yeah, so you've got Ricky is the old guy that can't hear. You've got Heinrich, who is the old Nazi. We'll get to him later. And I never caught the third guy's name, but he's the one who starts giving her creepy compliments at this point in the movie, right? You've got beautiful what? teeth. What? Yeah. That's like a top 10 creepiest possible compliment. We're getting super judgy again. I feel like he was, <laughs> this is just a nice old man who is like, I like your teeth. What, what is that? So, okay. No, I'm, I'm like, I heard myself say it, <laughs> but like, mm, I've had. Now I'm going to explore Ann Arbor and be like, hey, do you have a teeth guy? And they'll be like, oh, the teeth. You're looking the for teeth the teeth guy. guy. Yes. <laughs> I'm not point to a hand drawn. <laughs> Nobody pick. calls me the teeth guy. That's not. They do it while you're not around. No, they call you he teeth heath. <laughs> Is what they Heath the teeth. Yeah. So she goes back. She, she goes back to commiserate with the other waitress. And she's like, oh, they sure are running me ragged, asking me two entire questions. Do we have cushions? It's like, oh, we don't have fucking we don't have cushion. We don't. There aren't armrests for that chair. No, <laughs> but they do. They have a cushion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they do find a, a, a cushion, don't they? OK, but the way that line gets delivered is Virgil, the restaurant owner. He walks to an X on the floor <laughs> of their set. He stops. He looks at the X. He shuffles a little bit further up. <laughs> yeah, right to up. the left, yeah. <laughs> and then he looks at the camera and he's like, a cushion for what? You, a person, uh, employee? And that, it's so good. It take, He shuffles. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then, of course, Ricky doesn't like his coffee. It's not hot enough, so she has to go nuke it. We watch all of this. Of course, it's to bassoon, so it must be hilarious. You know it's comedy. Right. And then they go for a comedy thing here, but it's more eldritch horror. She brings him the coffee, and she's like, careful, it's really hot. And this actor just chugs the not hot coffee. But I, I thought he was just going to be like, the burning makes me feel alive. It's the only thing left. <laughs> that would fit the character better. <laughs> Blood starts to pour out of his eyes. Oh, God. So, yeah. So they, we, we do a time cut, but it's just to them eating breakfast and talking about generic old guy stuff. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's just they didn't write them lines. Look. These are fictional old men. They could be Captain America and the Red Skeleton if you want them to. But they're just like, oh, during the war, there was less food than now. Indeed, there was. Yep. Yeah, that's the conversation they're having. So we cut to them leaving. She goes to clean off the table and damn it, they've left her a 15 cent tip. Right. Oh, my God. Which this movie will treat like, oh, beans, instead of fuck those people. They can literally never walk into this right. restaurant no, again. This no, is the, like, no. fucking don't you play a bassoon right now. <laughs> don't you fucking play a bassoon. A 50, you, there need to be real consequences. Right, like, no, this needs to be the fucking John Wick's dog absolutely. just got no, killed moment. fucking Will Smith needs to show up and deal with you for 15 cent tips. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God, you know, my in my notes, I'm like, ah, they're old. At least they'll die soon, I guess. Yeah. Jesus. But again, the movie is just like, wah, bah, 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 you know, or whatever. It's literally nothing these guys could do 
or go through for the rest of the movie will redeem them. We watch a man like die in the midst of aphasia in this movie. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. He only dipped five cents. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Cause they only each left a nickel. Yeah. 15 right. cents is a literally a challenge to a fist fight. Yep. If I left a 15 cent tip, I would expect, I would hope to be followed to the parking lot for a fist fight. But, but. Yep. She doesn't feel this way. She thinks that they were such a delight just now with their 15 cent tip that they should prepare their food for them in advance like fucking servants to an unfair tyrant lord. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We, we cut to the, <laughs> the restaurant's closing that night. So she's leaving. Though we established at the interview that she went into work at 7 a.m. It's dark out now. Right. So they're leaving that night after her 13 hour shift or whatever. And she's like, hey, Virgil, I have this great idea where we can just make their food in advance. And the instant they show up, we can we can give it to him. And he's like, yeah, sh sure, man. Why not? Yeah. Yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, though, she's saying she wants the restaurant to prep like three pancakes, three sausages, a bowl of whipped cream and some scrambled eggs for the other two guys. That's the special that they order mm -hmm. and have that like pre-made and then sitting under a fucking heat lamp for a while that's revolting that's so much worse than just the eight seconds it's like that's such a quick order to make too yeah that's a five minute order you know what it is though it's an excellent reward for a 15 cent tip well that's true yeah hey, fellas i put this in the ideal conditions for food poisoning eat up <laughs> <laughs> yeah seriously if you walk into a restaurant and they hand you that order right away don't eat it yeah. that's a horrible idea no there should be a poison in that food <laughs> right so, okay, so then we, we cut to, like, the next Wednesday. They're back in. They come in every Wednesday morning, thus the name of the movie. And, of course, once again, they come into the fucking soundtrack that Goofy fucks to, I guess. <laughs> and look, I get the formula. <laughs> they're grumpy old men, but I had their food ready for them. So their hearts opened up, but I learned something that day. Nope, they just fucking suck still. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she's got the fucking cushion ready and she's got the coffee all warmed up for him. And now it's too hot. Jesus. What? Okay. Why is the coffee cold? What do you do? What's happening in this restaurant where get a coffee machine that keeps the coffee <laughs> hot on the thing? Put it in a samovar, an urn. It's so easy. How are you? How are you serving cold coffee? Well, and it's funny, too, because all of us at this point seem to start to realize that there was never going to be a plot. Yeah. Right. Like I wrote in my notes. Oh, my God. This is the story of that one time I nailed table six, isn't it? <laughs> it and it is. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> and to make them still difficult. Right. Because she's done all the things for them. Now, deaf guy goes, his bacon strips are bigger than mine. God damn it. I, I wrote, you know, they have surgeries for that kind of stuff <laughs> now. But seriously, if you're if somebody says that you pick up the bacon from the plate and switch it <laughs> with your fucking hands there you go <laughs> I pick it up with my mouth and I spit it onto the other plate fuck you let me lick my hand so I can grab it like the next page or something yeah oh. alright well I'll tell you what if we waited for something to happen we'd never get a break so we're gonna take one here but we'll return soon with even more of the Wednesday morning breakfast club okay I think all I need now is paper towels I'm good to go so just, Those are oh, mine. Oh, um, sorry. You know, okay, cool. Uh, I'll just grab this one here then. No, no they're all mine. Oh, okay. I need some. Yep. I need some oh, okay. Sorry, just sorry. Who, who are you? I'm a part of broken society that apparently just hangs out at grocery stores now. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, between facilitating the bad thinking at the highest levels of government, and living in a constant threat of danger that even I recognize, people like me mm. are just everywhere now. Yeah. Okay. That tracks. Um. So, any chance I could do my food shopping without dealing with um, w w whatever this is, just without this? Well, why don't you try Hello Fresh? What's Hello oh, Fresh? Come on, really? You weren't out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Sure, but is it like good? Is the food good? Oh, it sure is. Warm yourself up from the inside out with limited time recipes inspired by cozy classics from around the world, like beef tenderloin and cheese fondue, or miso sesame shrimp and bacon ramen. 
Okay, those sound amazing. Don't actually. they? And they were, actually. Unpacking is a breeze. No bagging or schlepping required. Go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Okay, so you're saying I go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and I use the code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three gifts? That's that right. They're free? They're free. That's right, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, I guess person in, in the grocery store um you sure i can't just have one of these before i go i just want to have no, one i need it no, to okay. fight her uh, off w- sorry sorry what fight who off hillary clinton yeah okay yeah that tracks i thought she might come up okay i'm on the school board of course you are from the makers of wednesday morning breakfast club comes a brand new series for those who love a server's worst customers did you say grape juice or ape juice what? Why would we have ape juice set a di- I hate you and I wish you were dead. First up, this fall, a school play that just wants coffee. We just finished opening night. I played Javert. There's literally nothing I care about less. Order food or I will kill myself in front of you right now. Order now. Javert kills himself. Then, ring in the holidays with Boys Night Out, the heartwarming story of a 12 top just looking to enjoy some sports as loudly as possible. Sorry, is it possible for us to do 12 separate checks? Absolutely not. You will get one check. We're out of wings down here. Oh, you're talking about... Yes, I I mean, I see that. Would you like to order more wings, or are you just telling me that? No. hate you. And finally, this spring, join us for the heartwarming tale, couple who came to a public place to break up because they thought it would be easier. How many times did you sleep with her, Gerald? How many times? Three! Is that what you want to hear, you heartless bitch? Is that what you want to hear? Hey, hey, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you guys ready to hear the specials? For or the I'm eighth right time, here? we're not ready yet. Not I ready. I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin Megan. She's in college. We haven't mentioned it because it doesn't fucking matter at all in any way to anything ever. Nope. And she, the writer of this movie doesn't know what college is. Nope. <laughs> exactly. But we do this. This is the one time it comes and we see her doing her homework late one night on Eli's laptop. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's, it's it, thick. Yeah. It's, it's girthy. Crazy to think of how big a 2011 laptop looks now. Yeah. yeah. It's just four toasters taped together. It's like <laughs> Zach Morris had a laptop. Yeah. It smushed them. Yep. Uh, it's real big. Yeah. So, and, and of course, we have to see that she's working so hard. And she's colleging so hard that she's just falling asleep in the middle of her homework. But she falls asleep sitting just like in the least realistic position after jogging. <laughs> right? She's just sitting straight up in the chair. Her head's like at attention. Are you sleeping in pike? <laughs> no. Did you say no while you're sleeping in pike position? Are you sleeping mid pancake flip? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and then, so we see that, you know, just so we know she's still schooling very hard as well. And then we go back to the restaurant. It's another Wednesday and we see her. I shit you not. Cutting the strips of bacon to the exact identical length. This <laughs> this movie is written by people who compliment waitresses' teeth, complain about their bacon length, and ask for cushions on chairs. And think that's reason. Uh, don't conflate right. all of those things as if they're all the same. Per- I don't think that's... I think you're being judgy again. But okay, but on the part of the server at this point, this is pathological. Right. Right. Unless these guys are like gangsters that are liable to shoot her if she gets this wrong. This is a pathological obsession at this point. Right. She's cutting the bacon to equal length with literally with scissors is what she's doing because the guy complained that his bacon was a different size than the other bacon. If I'm this server, I'm going to. So I want to take it a step further. I want to roll, you know, like fruit by the foot. Mm hmm. I want to roll it up like that with like a paper ruler as the the paper, the the wax Ooh, paper. So uh-huh. then I like unfurl it and it's like, whoop, 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 and it's exactly the same size. <laughs> oh, I face. give him tiny ass bacon for the rest of his fucking life with his 15 cent ass tip. Yeah. I get comically large bacon to the other guy. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lay an entire side of a pig on the yeah, other no, guy. Right, like, yeah, the, gets, the Flintstone ribs show up of bacon for the other guy. Right, yeah, yeah, no, he gets a fucking clown's bow tie worth of bacon, and the other you guy get gets pocket bacon sand bits. of baking bits in your yes, eye. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> gets a piece of napkin dyed red. <laughs> So the old folks, they come in again and, and, and they talk about the good old days. This is the part where they, where they have to address Heinrich's accent. Yeah. So she's like, hey, are, are you German? And he's like, no, I'm Austrian, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Fuck you, you suck. Right. It's a different country. Yeah. That's so stupid. Europeans need to get over that. It's a different country shit. <laughs> right? Like, like That's the difference between Georgia and South Carolina, Europe and all its fucking countries. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, Nobody knows the difference you. between a German and an Austrian accent. The official language is German in both. You, <laughs> we all know historically what happened in both. Let's just relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not your fault. Hitler was your guy. Right. Yeah. That's the thing that I've never understood about this distinction. It's not like Austria were famous Nazi resistors. <laughs> right, yes. No, no, no. You don't understand. <laughs> we were the Austrians, you know, mm -hmm. where he was from and that willingly joined the Axis. <laughs> oh, La Résistance from Austria? Is that where that was? Was that from Austria? Or was that someone else? <laughs> no? Oh, Austria. You mean that country where the resistance was so fucking rare they made a musical about the one guy who did it? <laughs> yes. Was your entire resistance Julie fucking Andrews? Yeah. Get out of here. Also, to be clear, what's her name? Megan is the, yes, the name Megan. of the main uh, character that we haven't learned yet in the fucking movie. It was on her application, Heath. Keep up. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I didn't look at I didn't look at her multi page C V yeah. that she literally used to get a job at a diner. At every frame of picture. Okay. But Megan says to this guy, she hears the accent and she's like, Oh, are you from Germany? To be clear, she wanted to hear some German history from a man that she thought was German, who very clearly would have been military age around nineteen forty. Yeah. Megan was asked. She wanted that. She ch yep. she asked for that. Megan's a Megan's a Nazi, right? Like, there's a lot of not well. Tell Nazis me some, in the movie. Tell me some Nazi stories. Yeah, asked and answered. Spoiler alert. Okay. Asked and answered. So yeah, I heard myself saying it, and I was like, no, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's it's there's a lot of Nazi stuff in the movie, especially after the the clean plate club. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. So, yeah, but she's like, yeah, I, a young person and very interested in the ramblings of old men. And they're like, oh, great. Let us tell you some stories. And then the other guy, the creepy compliment guy, compliments her teeth again. And then just to make it even fucking creepier, he compliments the length of her fingers. This is Buffalo Bill could sidle into the shot yes. and be like, hey, man, you're creeping me out. Right, no, I wrote, <laughs> okay, my, buddy. I wrote my notes. Like, if he's not a serial killer sewing together a woman at home and sizing her up for parts, I don't understand why this is in the movie. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, the movie tries to explain it away. They're like, he used to be a piano teacher. That's why he commented on the length of your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that, does that make it better? I does don't it, know. Like, did they think that helped? Uh, I feel like they thought that helped. Oh, otherwise that would have been creepy. Cool. Yeah, that's creepy all of a sudden if it's not the context of a piano teacher. Yeah. So, do you think I have the hands for jazz? <laughs> <laughs> well, and if there was any point to this finger length piano player discussion, it was just so they could all bitch about their arthritis, right? Let me see your finger blisters. I play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's not better. It's not nope. better. Either way, it's bad. And again, just to show you like how transitions happen in this movie, literally the old guy, the deaf guy, stands up and goes, Jiminy Cricket, I have to take a shit. <laughs> and then <laughs> ends, ends the scene. Do you know why? Not because that was written in the script. Because that actor needed to take a shit. Oh, he ruined the shot. And they were like, that's perfect for the shot. Yes. Well, but there was one lingering last little bit that I have to point out in this scene. It wasn't in that shot. But... um. At the end, she walks by the other waitress and she says, hey, are my teeth pretty? And the other waitress is like, no, your teeth are all fucked up. And she's like, OK, yeah, that's what I thought. All right. All right. That's what just I thought. OK. <laughs> OK. But she, that's not what she thought. She thought the 90 year old stripper likes her yep. is what she thought. <laughs> she's like, my teeth are beautiful. Right. And the other waitress is like, nah. ah. <laughs> you know, I would have loved a little more. Ah, 
out of Martha there, <laughs> right? Because she was just real quick with it. Like she was giving her some ketchup or something. Like, nope, nope, not at all. Oh, uh, no, I, <laughs> I get features. it. I've worked with Megan's. I fucking get it. It's fucking Megan. Relax. Your name's Megan. We all know your name's Megan. I'm calling her Megan. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So then the narration kicks in to tell us where she is in terms of her schoolwork. Yeah. Why the fuck could we possibly care about that? Never matters. Never makes any sense. Yep. But it's now, it's another Wednesday. They're coming back in for another breakfast. But piano teacher, long finger compliment guy, isn't there. He's in the hospital because of his oldness. Yeah. And we get to hear the the woodwind section, like, try to tone it down. In real time, <laughs> sad it's like bassoon. Yeah. Bassoon's playing. Are like, <laughs> 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 it's so good. yeah. If a bassoon could say "I mean," it would be here. With the scene transition. <laughs> but yeah, they tell her that he, he's in the hospital, and she's like, "Oh, it seems so sudden." And I'm like, "Well, everybody goes into the hospital all at once." <laughs> 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 what? I sent my legs ahead this week. Yeah. I, at the beginning of the month, you get on their website and you sign up for the hospital. It's like a nice <laughs> restaurant. You get a reservation. No. And the, the the question is like, oh, he's in the hospital. Is it bad? Is No, no. It's a routine hospital stay at age 90. It's a normal, <laughs> yeah. normal thing. Yeah. So we, we see her go back to the little, you know, poison Petri dish that she keeps their food in and set one of the plates aside. Right. All sad. And the bassoons are very sure we're sad about these warm eggs going to waste. <laughs> they were like, but I, I could not. Uh, this is second only to the Herman Cain Award in not caring right. for me. <laughs> I wanted so bad for the Heath in the movie to go and eat that plate. Yeah, just right. Like, so this is a, just an entire special, right? So it's, he's dead, right? I'm having this. This is this is <laughs> we're up a plate of special breakfast, right? Like we're we're up one. We're up one. I'm eating this. And then they finally give at least some context to his weird compliments. The guys show Megan a picture of piano teacher's wife who died like a year ago. And it turns out that she's got teeth just like Megan's. Oh, he was comparing me to his dead wife. Now it's much less creepy. (laughs) Well, it's it's all the more likely that he was trying to sew together a woman back home. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, also, why do you have a picture of your buddy's dead wife in your wall? (laughs) He gave it to me. You're making it weird. She had really nice fingers. Also, <laughs> he told me to scope out someone who had exactly 14 and a half inch forearms, and I needed to remember. <laughs> so, so yeah, but she, the narrator, comes in and says the piano teacher guy never came back because he's old and they die. But she visited him in the hospital. That's the fucking. That is the best hell. Is that your waitress at your fucking diner shows up to sit by your bedside as you exit consciousness into the fucking void? That's well, the dream. What do you say? That's the dream. That is. I, right. I, whoever wrote this movie is probably dead now because this is a 2013 movie. They were about to die and they were like, this is what I want to happen. I want the fingery waitress at the <laughs> breakfast place <laughs> to sit next to my dying bed. And they do. Well, and it's so fucked up because she even says, I don't think he recognized me. <laughs> then what the yeah. fuck are you doing there? Seems like you could just skip that then. If I woke up in the hospital and I turned and the waitress of the restaurant that I go to once a week was sitting there by my bedside. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recognize her either. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, I don't know who the fuck you are, but just in case you're a waitress, if in case you're a server who I see so- once a week, would you leave so I can die alone and screaming a much preferable situation to this one. Okay. I feel like maybe he thought his wife was just like extra young looking that day. Okay. All like right. he was seeing his wife and like, I wanted to see his thought bubble about the like stuff that was happening in his head. It, they missed a lot of fun points where they they could have they could have had me. The movie could have had me. Agreed. Yeah, they didn't. They really didn't wring the humor potential out of his death at all. No, they did not. That's it's hilarious if they do. It, just kick up the bassoons, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so he dies. We get this scene where she's putting his obituary on the bulletin board at work. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, Tiffany, can you switch shifts with me on Wednesday? Also, that motherfucker who comes in on Wednesdays is in the deep blackness of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
CPR <laughs> training on Thursday. Ah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, so with the narrator cuts in to tell us that yet more time has passed, and and those two old guys still came in on Wednesdays and ate breakfasts. Yeah, well, we get a little uh, Christian bigotry here. One of the misheard things is she, her name is Megan, and he's like, "Pagan, she's a nice girl." Yeah, and I wrote in my notes, I, I could confirm that pagans could be very, very nice girls. <laughs> 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 Miss it out, deaf guy. Yeah. So, yeah, so she comes out and and she's like, hey, Ricky, the old guy who can't hear very well, can you tell me about your old injuries? And he's like, I thought you'd never ask. Right. Once again, the fantasy of whatever weird ass waitress harasser wrote this thing in the first place. And again, they can write any story. I saved little Timmy from the well. Sure. I was in the war. Right. There was a dragon. I went to the factory <laughs> and I sucked and it got squooshed. Yeah. No, it, well, and, and of course it's got to be fucked up because it's an old guy story. So apparently he was a kid when this happened. Yep. But he fucked up his fingers in a, in an industrial accident. And apparently the point of telling us this story is that hilarious joke at the end. Yeah. My mom washed it in whiskey. Nope, not great. What? But she wouldn't let me lick it. And I just wrote in my notes, see, Heath, you're not supposed to lick it. That's not, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> whiskey, that that makes a lot of sense. Whiskey fixes, it's a medicine. He says, my mom wouldn't let me lick my fingers. And then there are literal fucking crickets for like 30 yep. seconds. It's a prescription medicine for some people sometimes. <laughs> Back in that day. So, okay, so now it's autumn. My God, this is so stupid. First of all, she says, I was wearing myself to a frazzle. Yep. Okay, again, like someone is badly programming a robot with fall words. Yes. yes. I was drinking <laughs> so much coffee and people wore hats. <laughs> yes, the narrator actually says the old guy still came in, but this time wearing coats and hats. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Have you met your word count yet? Can I help you meet your word count in any possible way other than this? Seriously, the movie's talking about weather right now. Yeah. The movie didn't know what to say yep. in its own movie and was like, the weather's cold. <laughs> so, like, I long wrote my fingers. Notes. Nope. Nope. I wrote my notes at this point. Hey, guys, what if a movie was all padding for time? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like like a couple of writers got into a contest to see who could make a movie of the most boring personal experience. And we're seeing the winner. Yeah. Who? Or like they weren't like they were like, oh, yeah, we've written a script. And then everyone showed up with the cameras and the actors the next day. And they were just like stalling. <laughs> His no. weather was bad that day. Yeah. And then they got she does the whole like sometimes they would make me laugh. And then you get them telling a funny story. And then sometimes they would make me cry. And, and we get a sad story. So that's what we're doing. But the stories they've chosen are so fucking bizarre and banal and insane. They have to be real. The only possible way that this exists is that these old guys were like, well, I've actually got a great and very, very funny story. <laughs> and the fucking <laughs> husk of a human who wrote this was like, tell me about the time you and your friends went roller skating and then didn't for 12 <laughs> minutes. Please. <laughs> Oh, God, it's lonely old customer that really needs to just take their change and leave. But you feel too sorry for him to tell him. So the movie, it really is not relatable content for Eli Bosnick. I will kick you out of the store, <laughs> ma'am. I will run. I will push the button on your electric wheelchair and push you out of the store. So. So, yeah. So but Ricky tells us this great story of the time that him and his buddy went skating in a warehouse and almost fell down, but didn't quite. Yeah. And then he finishes very clearly. And she goes, and then what happened? And he's like, I had lunch. I went home. I went <laughs> 70 years passed. And now I'm here. Uh-huh. And then what? What? <laughs> then you asked me. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. <laughs> but then it's time for Heinrich to tell us a sad story, right? <laughs> and what's funny about Heinrich's story is that he keeps like, 
he he tells his sad story, I think, and then he looks at the director, and the director's just like, more. I need more, right? And he's like, oh, and then and then my oldest brother died in the war. And the guy's like, more, more. He's like, oh, and then my second oldest brother also <laughs> died in the also war. Also died in the war. <laughs> so I want to go through the fates of the brothers. Okay. They're very important. All right. We have to start with that. First of all, Throughout this entire thing, there's a snare drum and clanging cymbals to the extent that I thought the camera was going to pan over and we would see Victor practicing his cymbals and be like, oh, sorry, were you telling us that story? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's nice." laughs> his, his dad went to the war. He lost his legs, but worse, he lost his leadership abilities. Yeah, what? Yeah, so he just sat home and peeled potatoes all day, every day. Yep. Then... Second oldest brother died of a grenade, which, quote, pulled him to pieces. Pulled him. Interesting use of the uh, word choice there. Mm -hmm. Third brother. Oh, no, we get like two other dead brothers. Then third brother, because apparently you're allowed to just number them by the ones that came back. I guess. Yeah. The yeah. two of them just get lumped into one there. It's like the Ten Commandments. <laughs> yeah. Third brother came home, but he was crazy now. And he goes. He laughed and laughed and danced like a child. And then the director rolled his fingers. No, I need more. This more. Give me more. Yeah. So, and of course, the soundtrack at this point is like, oh, he laughed and danced like a child. That's pretty funny. No, it's it's never it's not. Let's go back to the snare drum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bassoon gets like one note in before apologizing. Like, -ro 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 -ro. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> so. Okay. So that all happens. And he, so it happens by him being like, okay, so <laughs> good. No, no, that's an awesome story about roller skates. My family got taken by Nazis. And he tells that entire <laughs> story as if it was like, apropos of roller skates, my family got stolen by Nazis. Grenade killed one. Horrible PTSD. My dad's legless, peeling potatoes very sadly in a fucking chair. Not really a chair, just an area, a potato peeling area that we had for him. Just he would do that. And I was like, okay, if this guy keeps going with the sad stories Another two minutes, it turns into a great movie. If he like keeps committing to this bit, and then he almost does. He's like, so my sisters were, well, they were perfect white blood wise, you know, Nazi wise. So the not, but they were too young to give Hitler a child. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, there's so much. I have to talk about so Th much. This so actor much. accepted my challenge. And now he's talking about his uh, blood pure sisters and procreating with Hitler perhaps. Yep. But then they cut it a little too early. They yeah, cut it and a little too early. It's actually worse than that. It's worse than that because Heath just said the Nazis came and took my brothers. No, 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 no. The Nazis came and drafted his brothers. That's called being a Nazi. Yes. Uh -huh. His Nazi brothers kept getting hurt. Yeah. Right. And he transitions from there to his pure Aryan sisters. Yeah, well, and then, okay, so, and this is all leading up to the story of his mom's prayer of Heath's best worst, right? Because he's like, and then the, when when my other brother died, my mom prayed to God. I heard her all night praying, and she said, dear God, I don't know which side I'm on in this war. Actual quote. She did not know which side she was on of World War II. Yeah. Dear God, Austria is a confusing one. What are we doing here? <laughs> are we pro, anti? What do you What do you think? She says, I don't know what side I'm on. All I know is there's so much evil in the world. And I'm like, oh, my God, they bury fine peoples on both sides. World War Fucking two! They sure <laughs> did. But Megan is so into this story, right? So she he tells all about how mom prayed that at least one of her kids would survive and that her daughters wouldn't be raped by Nazis. Right. And then that prayer was granted and mom was like, I should have really gone for more than that, I guess. <laughs> right? Yeah. I also... I have to talk about this moment of interstitial interjection because he does the like, oh, they cry, keep my daughters from their eyes. And deaf guy's like, yeah, that was a tough, tough story. Also, my other <laughs> brother. <laughs> and then I, I have to assume that his condition for appearing in this movie was to give his fucking dissertation on the difference between marrying and breeding. Right. It's a screed. It is a screed. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever heard in my life. 
Yeah, he goes like, first of all, he begins to stare into the middle distance. He is shouting. His voice is hoarse. He's like, there is a fine line between marrying and breeding. This, we are in the middle of a diner comedy. Sorry, but is there a fine line? There's a really broad line between those two things. That's a thick line. No. (laughs) I can just, like, I I just parsed them in my head just now. Yep. 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 And he ends this screed with, and again, real quote, as long as the result is a flawless child, then love has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it it's it, like I wrote my notes like, did they just not have the heart to yell cut in the middle of his soliloquy? <laughs> <laughs> and then the bassoon picks back up. I, get, I, get, I cannot clarify enough that it is, then love has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I can't exactly tell you what the speech was about that he suddenly gave at the end of that story, but it really felt like he was realizing in that moment that maybe there was a downside to eugenics, but he wasn't sure. Mm, That's a really generous interpretation. Isn't it, though? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, where do, like, genuinely, where do you think the movie fell on uh, the Holocaust, positive, negative wise? I don't think it's clear. I also don't think it's clear. I think it's about how close Hans was standing to the people making the movie. And say, <laughs> yeah. You know what needs to be clear? That. It, yep. Uh, yep. If there's one thing. Mm. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. Well, we watched a lot more Nazi apologetics just now than even we're used to so I, I think we need a break but first let me give act the rest of act one the hard sell <laughs> will kids these days ever build character if they're always playing those fancy computer games can someone check in the back and see if they have the unscented version of this ointment how will the high school basketball team do this year you think Go Bears. find out the answers to questions exactly like those when we return for the desperately tragic conclusion of the Wednesday morning breakfast club Hi, welcome to Gymnast Planet, where we're a gym, but we're not, or something. It's unclear. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I need to uh, cancel the membership. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I-, I guess I can help you with that. Uh, Great. Hey, Larry. Yeah, what's up, Tanya? This guy needs to cancel his membership. Oh, God. Oh, God, no, why? We're, we're like a gym, but we're not what we are. No, no, it's nothing to do with you guys. I just need to, to cancel the membership. It's not personal. Oh, okay, excuse me. I, I have a, a thing over here. Why? Oh, God, why? Okay. God, is another... It, uh, wow, okay. Oh, my God. Is, is, there like a, is there like a quick, easy way to cancel, <laughs> maybe online? I don't want... Where I don't have to deal with the, the person crying and no, no, screaming your, your from... Your tests are too kinda, great, Lord. Close. too great and too terrible. Oh, you probably want to sign up for Truebill. It's aggressive. Sorry, what's Truebill? Well, Truebill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or that you simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Hi, Mom. Yeah, I lost another one. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. You're just going to stop while he does that? Okay. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And I don't have to deal with any of this. You think I didn't offer my body? My body and my soul. Yeah. Nope, you don't. I signed up for the free budgeting tools, but they've actually made canceling subscriptions I don't use anymore a breeze. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash awful movies. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go then. Good luck with, with all that. You mean cleaning up the mess you made? I can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I just can't. Do what you got to do, man. <laughs> I have a movie for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to go? Yeah, let me just grab my coat. Uh, hey there, fellas. How was everything? Oh, um, great. Thank you. Uh, I'm Brad. I own the place. Oh, um... Nice to meet you, Red. It's a it's a great place. Excellent, excellent. Hey, uh, will y'all let me know uh, when you die? Okay. I'm sorry. What? Let me know uh, when when you die, so I can put you up here on the wall. 
that wall with the pictures, that's as dead people? Yep. Rep, Red's dead wall, I call it. So the rhyme. I thought that was for people who like ate a big sandwich or something. Yeah, like nah. a menu thing. I always thought that kind of thing was poor taste. Yeah, you know, who has a wall full of people who just finished eating a whole pizza or whatever? Right. Right. But a wall of literally dead people is that's weird. Is that better to you? Like that, you think that's the, the dead right. people yeah. Better? Yeah, you yeah, so you yeah, you know, you you can put it in your will or uh or heck, if you're around here, I'll just uh, you know, I'll clip the obituary and put it up there for you. Cool. Got it. Okay. Well, nice meeting you. We should go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I suppose it's just nice for old Red to know, you know, all the folks in Oblivion and and Red. Well, he's still here, still thinking, heart's still beating, still living. Each and every death is a teeny tiny victory for away. Red if you think about it. Right. Um, Red, do you prepare any of the food here? No, oh, no, that's cookie. Cool, cool. We're going to leave and never come back now. Like ever, never coming back. Nope. You'll come back when you're on that wall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the diner crew on the week of Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you what, that restaurant was, quote, Bursting at the seams with busyness. No, it's it's half empty. I can see it. I'm yeah, well, looking at that. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I was curious if she meant busyness or if she was misreading the word business, right? We'll never know. Bad AI <laughs> robot. Bad <laughs> AI robot that wrote this movie. But yeah, to Heath's point, I counted there are four full tables and three servers who each have one and one third table. <laughs> yep. You are not busy. That's one server. You have one server for the restaurant at that point. Yep. Everybody else has to leave. Yeah. But now, now you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, Eli, this movie's a pretty good prank on Heath. Could we say, watch someone return a box of jelly donut filling for <laughs> seven or eight hours to truly push him to the edge of sanity? <laughs> okay. So this is so fucking weird. She's like, the restaurant was super busy, but you know, Virgil never got rattled. Virgil had nerves of steel. Like she's given a fucking World War One trench memory of some sort. Mm -hmm. And then we cut, yeah, to Virgil on the phone arguing about them sending him raspberry donut filling instead of strawberry donut filling for no shit. Three goddamn minutes. Okay, you said we cut to that. We don't cut to any. We do. We get both of those conversations at the same time. They're standing next to each other, her boring conversation with the other waitress and his boring conversation on the phone trying to return raspberry filling. And we get both. The movie was doing two boring conversations simultaneously. It's yet worse than that, Heath. You're you're trying to make it your like memories have made it easier on you. The thing I'm talking about is the narration that's going on on top of the two separate boring conversations. <laughs> was there a narrator too? <laughs> yeah. Yep. The, all of it. She's talking about it. Well, he's returning the filling. She's pointing out that the old guys never showed up, even though it was Wednesday. And the narration is talking about how Virgil never gets rattled when he's behind the grill. <laughs> What? And Virgil is like, I've been making donuts for 17 years. I wouldn't use, I'd shooter fill it with my own liquid diarrhea than strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> the narrator might as well walk in the frame and be like, excuse me, I'm going now. And then like they all start arguing. What? There was three? <laughs> it's my turn. God damn it. Also, what the fuck does it matter if it's raspberry or strawberry donuts at this diner? What? Well, but consequences. Like somebody was going to come in and be like, is this? A raspberry goddamn donut after you did strawberry for years? Like, what What are they worried about? Well, but here's the thing, though, is I, I'm writing in my notes. I don't know if this is an irrelevant thing that's happening in the movie or if it's the plot. Yep. Right? Like, you could argue that the plot of this movie was that he ended up with raspberry filling instead of strawberry. Yeah. The donuts are the only thing that aren't dead by the end of the movie. <laughs> Raspberries are better filling flavor. Regardless. It is. It is. Sorry, objectively speaking. Yes. So, yeah, we get out of that scene as though we've been paroled from it. And then we had to. This is a great little moment. Megan went home to see her family for Thanksgiving. And we get just this one scene of her at home. And apparently the director's like, oh, you know what? We playful. Why don't you and the guy playing your brother have a little pillow fight? 
And they bill a fight way too hard and way too long and just taking turns <laughs> whacking each other one after the other for like 45 seconds. I would describe it as sexually aggressive. <laughs> yes. Between yeah. the brother and sister. <laughs> yeah. Pillow fight wise. Yeah. The Folgers house next door are like, <laughs> those siblings are fucking. <laughs> so, yeah. And so after that important 45 seconds, we head back to the diner. You know what's something cool that happens in diners? Roll ups of <laughs> knives and forks into napkins, and then you roll yep. it, and then you tape around it, and then you put like that onto the that set. The ta- you put it onto that. the table sometimes. I feel like they stopped doing that because of the COVID. We watched this happen. Yep, we're watching them do roll ups, and Heinrich comes in, but Ricky, the guy who couldn't hear, is dead because he's old. No, not Ricky. Why he once roller skated in a warehouse and almost hurt himself. He couldn't hear well. He had so many traits. <laughs> so many traits. Wait, Ricky's lead? What would that mean? <laughs> so, yeah, so we watched Megan sadly set another plate aside from the heat lamp. Yeah. Symbolically. And and then Virgil is like, hey, Megan, um, I need you to go grieve with the old man at that table. We'll stop seating your section for a while while you grieve. Fuck! No, absolutely not. I make tips because you seat my section. I'm not gre. I'm not spending an hour grieving. Get out of here. I make two fifteen an hour because you assume I make fifteen percent on every tip, and I don't. He gives me fifteen cents. Whatever. Well, and also he says we'll cover for you. There's Heinrich is the only customer in the dining room. We can see the whole diner. <laughs> cover right. what? What What would you say you're going to cover? You're going to have to do my roll-ups. <laughs> right. And she breaks Heinrich his food and he's like, oh, I am too sad to eat today. And the proper response is, well, then why the fuck did you come to a diner, Heinrich? <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm going to need you to surrender that seat to a paying customer, sir. <laughs> but instead, she pulls up a seat like comically close to him. And lays her head on his shoulder, gives him a big hug, big side hug, and is sad with him. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I hate everything about it. So he's going to leave without eating or paying for the food that they made for him. Of course. Yeah. Just waste everyone's time and get a hug. Well, and it's also it's funny because they have to have him like get up and leave. But he needs his his hat and he needs his his coat and he needs his his scarf and he needs his. His cane, it just goes on for so far. Oh, long. no, I have dropped my Domino's collection. And they're really trying for this touching moment here. When she when he leaves, she goes, please come again. Why? He tipped you five cents. Yes. He tipped you a nickel. <laughs> and then, so he leaves. She's like, I hope you come again. And he's like, hey, what would the movie be about if I didn't, right? And then we linger there for quite a while to see if this actor can summon a tear. She does. She does manage it. We have to give her like 35 seconds, but she does get one. Yeah, she cries for a little bit, but not not long enough to get really funny. Again, if she cried for like yeah. the rest of the movie, 15 minutes, that's funny. <laughs> yep, that's really funny. That's pretty good. 15 minutes of crying? Are you kidding? Because like three minutes in, you're like, are they going to keep doing it? And she does. And then like nine minutes in, you're like, wow, that's nine minutes of crying. <laughs> okay. This movie never had the guts to commit to its bits. Yeah. No, no. So, okay. So that night, the whole diner crew is wondering what they're going to do about poor old Heinrich now that all of his friends are dead. Literally the least realistic part of the movie. Like M- Megan's like, what if he doesn't come back? And I so <laughs> wanted Virgil to say, well, I'm going to be stuck with a ton of fucking whipped cream because really... I only get it for him. (laughs) I wanted realistic waitress when they were like, oh, poor Heidrich. She's like, who the fuck is Heidrich? Guys, can I go home? Is the shift over? (laughs) I'm doing these whippets. We don't need this anymore. (laughs) Yeah, but instead, of course, she goes, well, maybe we should bring him a pie. And somebody else says, maybe we should sing to him. (laughs) And someone else says, that's a great idea. We all like singing. I'm like, are you people cartoon squirrels? What the fuck is happening? (laughs) There is nothing more obvious that this is a shitty old man fantasy than the idea that young people want to finish a full shift of work and then bring an old man a pie and sing him a song because he (laughs) exists. Okay, but I got to admit, Virgil's reaction to this idea was the fucking best. 
They're like, let's uh, let's bring him some pies and we'll serenade him with a nice song. And because, uh, like, I mean, think about it. Like, what if this guy doesn't come back? We should we should do that. And Virgil's like, I don't know who fucking cares if he doesn't come back. He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> people, people die all the fucking time. What's wrong with all of you? <laughs> he tips five fucking cents. And then we get to watch Virgil begrudgingly do the rest of the movie. Yes, right, right, exactly. Like they talked him into it. So yeah, so that night they all go to Heinrich's house to sing to him. There are a bunch of extra, I guess where these are supposed to be other servers that we've never met to like round out our choir. These are singer mm-hmm. ringers, I guess. Yep. Virgil, by the way, they could not talk him into singing, so he just sits down next to Heinrich like they have a fucking pie or something for you. This is fucking weird. I'm robbing you. <laughs> just so you know, in a second, I'm going to say, can I use your bathroom? I'm stealing all your pills. I'm not even reading them. He might as well start <laughs> scrolling on Tinder on his phone just for a while. The rest of the movie. Yeah. So good. Yeah, they, they all sing for a little while. And of course, like, they're a, a choir that's practiced together, but in the movie's universe, they all just were like, hey, do you guys all know this obscure ass church song? And like, yep, we sure do. You mean the one that's in German? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. To be clear, this Nazi church in the United States in very real life learned a couple of songs in German and they made a movie to set up this moment when they would sing the songs that they learned. Yes. Yeah, for sure, right? That's what happened? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, when we hear Megan sing, we suddenly realize why she... Because she's a, she's a quite talented singer. Right. Can't act for shit, but she can sing. Not Nazi singer. Let's just be like yeah, all the I way mean, clear you know, about what yeah. it is. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so but they, they sing together and then they're like, hey, can you please come back to our diner on Wednesday mornings? I What would I do without your nickel? And he's like, yes, come in. Sing me another song. Sing me another song. I so wanted him to be like, oh, uh, we, I've got, uh, a, um, to do on my phone now. <laughs> I, the fucking, <laughs> the fucking audacity of having someone come to your house and bring you a pie and sing you a fucking song and your response is sing me another fucking song? Absolutely not. Absolutely. His, his real response is what the fuck are you people doing <laughs> How singing did you know on where my I porch? lived? I'm just the <laughs> Wednesday That's insane. I, okay, I will take the pie but please leave <laughs> and do not keep singing at my house that I did not invite you to. But instead he's like, yeah, Come inside and sing another song to me. If somebody says that to you, don't go inside. No, nope. that's not a good idea. Nope. I also wanted him to have to do like the 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 band at the cantina in Star Wars or something because like they only knew the one German song. So yeah, Mary had a. <laughs> they all sing him another one. <laughs> I, I have to point out too, the girl on the far left is this bored and confused by all of this as I am. I mean, she's singing, sure, but she does not want to be there or know why she is. Yep. So yeah, so the, they sing him another song and then we we head back to the diner where Megan is wrapping up a shift because she's got to leave early to go to Heinrich's place and make him sausage. Why doesn't this child know anyone her own age? Right? Is she a reverse pedophile? The only explanation for this movie is she's a reverse pedophile. Yeah, well, apparently they just needed something to happen to end this stupid fucking movie, right? So she's like, Martha's like, oh, do you have a hot date? And she's like, no, I'm going to go make sausage for that old guy whose friends all died. And she's like, that's the saddest and most pathetic thing you could possibly be doing. And she's like, right? Hey, are you talking about the guy who loves your teeth and long fingers? Is is that the the guy you're going to? to <laughs> no, no, that guy died. This is his second best friend. <laughs> oh, okay, no, that's, that's that's not creepy at all. Then, if it's uh, not that specific guy, cool. There's also this great moment. She's like, "Hey, Martha, you should come with me. It would be fun." And we get to watch Martha not be able to come up with a good excuse on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Martha. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I have night. You have night? <laughs> <laughs> I have my night. Tonight. N- what? What? How? <laughs> what did you say? My fingers are too short. So <laughs> Martha goes with Megan to eat sausage and potatoes with Heinrich. Guys, we watched them eat potatoes and sausage together. Yep. 
Like uh, we watch them dish the potatoes out and like, you know, and, and the sausages and we watch them eat. But not like skillfully dish. The potatoes. No, <laughs> no, they have to like get, like get a go back for seconds on each one. And oh, that's a little more than I'm going to need right there. I, just, okay. uh, I, I fumbled the spoon. I fumbled the spoon. <laughs> I fumbled the spoon. I'm going to pick it back up. Jesus. You're picking back up the spoon. Yeah, I'm picking back up the spoon. Now I got yeah. it. Now I got this it. This is the movie. Now I got it. And again, these three people eating sausage and potatoes together again is the plot. Yep. Are you you eating the potatoes? Yeah. Yeah, I am because you handed it to me. This is the climactic finale of the film. If these people were extras in the background of a regular movie, they would be fired. <laughs> That's how bad they seem. <laughs> oh, my God. You silently eat potatoes like an idiot. You're <laughs> fucking fired. God. She flashes back to act one and she's like, when I first saw those old guys, you know, for the first three minutes as they shambled along during the opening credits, how could I have known how deep an impact they would have on me? And I'm like, you need to have more impactful experiences, lady. I need you to get hit by a car. Literally anything more. Yeah, like you need a literal impact is what you need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. At one point she goes, now when I brush my crooked teeth, I think of those sweet old men. It's just like, what a weird takeaway from that horrible, horrible <laughs> relationship. Also, we should point out that like this was clearly written without this actor's like this actor's teeth are not crooked. Nope. They're just like they're she obviously spent some money to straighten those fuckers out. So it just makes no sense at all. She inherited a good deal of Nazi memorabilia from these guys <laughs> for sure. Well, yeah, because then she comes on and she's like, Heinrich died a year later. And I'm like, did we need to know that? I don't understand how that's significant <laughs> to the movie. But she's like, and I thank God for him all the time. I'm like, boom, Christian movie totally counts. Nailed it at the end. In a Hague prison. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but she learned to value them even though they were old. Yeah. And then there's literally a title card that shows up that just says, cherish them now. I wrote my notes. I feel like someone's grandma made this movie to guilt you about not calling enough. Yep. Boy, didn't they? Yeah. No, that was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, should, you should call grandma more, but still. It's, it's you are, you're right, right. No, obviously. Didn't execute that, execute that well. If your grandma doesn't suck, you call her. Yeah, well, sucks, that's true. Don't call her. If she's a Nazi, maybe don't. Right. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We once watched a movie about waiting for the working bar to fill in on a computer program. <laughs> and I feel like this might still be the movie where the least amount of shit happened. No, because mm -hmm. like, like to wait is a verb. Yeah, right. The, the, the computer was doing something through that whole fucking movie. Right. So if doing this show has taught us anything, it's that there's always going to be a worse. That means that record is going to get broken. Hmm. Cool. So my question to you to close things off is that when it does, what even more boring activity will the movie be centered around? Does uh, the blockchain being explained? <laughs> <laughs> blockchain reaction in a world. <laughs> oh, nice. See, I was going to go for a sequel. I was going to go with the guy who tidied the old guy's graves as they died. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of the Wednesday Morning Breakfast Club, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? By popular demand, and by that I mean a month of tweets, we'll be watching Marky Mark, <gasps> Father Stu. Oh, I've got a little advent calendar for that one, dude. I really <laughs> do. I'm so excited. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 348 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If they count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and we've drafts on Mars and all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the slightly less inappropriately named than usual Breakfast Club Close. Breakfast Club Close. The new owner of Virgil's Nazi dog whistle themed diner is 
GOP Congressperson Lauren Boeber. <laughs> the director would only realize in post that he'd accidentally swapped the script for a printout of his niece's Facebook posts. <laughs> Heinz was totally a Nazi camp guard. Like, totally. Oh, absolutely, absolutely correct. 100%. Austrian guy. Oh, does he live in Argentina now? Does he farm the pigs? <laughs> Fuck you. One of my favorite moments as a server was at Max Brenner. We had the breaking up couple. And when we would like push tables together, the manager would like do a special thing in the POS system to like delete the tables that we had pushed together and they were sitting there breaking up and I was like, I've gone over like three times and she literally deleted their table from existence. Oh, nice. She nice. was just like, they're never going to order anything. She, they're gonna, she's going to cry and he's going to leave and then she's going <laughs> to leave. And he was right. And he was yep. exactly yep. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that guy doesn't become a recurring skit character. I can hear no. Eli regretting that voice like three yeah. words in. <laughs> She goes sit and sits in the back with Crunch. <laughs> Wait, Crunch Biggins is amazing. How come he's not back? Is he hard to do voice? He hurts my voice, yeah. He hurts it? Okay. Hi, Mom. Yeah, I lost another one. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. You're just going to stop while he does that? Okay. Because companies make subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Free budgeting tools. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Get it together, damn it. Okay. Mm. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020.